You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with a Let's Play episode of Psychic Connections, Quinn's Path. So, it's been a little bit since we played Psychic Connections. Uh, I started doing a couple more new. I started doing a couple more new uh, uh, free visual novels. So let's see. Oh yeah, we were choosing who to text, and you know who we're gonna text since it's his run. It's gonna be Quinn. Anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy the video, and let's jump right into it. All right, <clears throat> Alarm Chan has been engaged. All right, text Quinn. Chances are Quinn isn't isn't in class right now, and it seems like he'd enjoy the conversation. Actually, even if he was in class, he'd probably still welcome the distraction. Hey, bunny boy. <laughs> Howdy, dog dude. What's up? Nothing much. Thought I'd see what you're up to. Nothing much, just binging a show. Yeah, anything good? Only if you're into musical shows. Ever watch Dusk Harmonies? No, but I do like the video game Dusk. I'm not overly familiar with Dusk Harmonies. It came out shortly after my accident, but I've never heard of it. It's been a popular show for the various issues it's tackled, as well as the diverse cast representation. Can't say I have, though I know the lead actor is pretty cute. Oh my god, for real, he is! I made him my screensaver after seeing season one. I don't tell my roomie. I don't think my roomie appreciates me watching my shows, though. You don't think so? Well, he got really mad at me the other night for staying up too late watching internet videos. He was all grumpy and said he'd smash my computer if I didn't go to bed. You think he'd really do that? Nah, I doubt it. Though I know I got to be careful not to overstep. Part of my college is part of my college is learning how to be more mindful of others. Well, let us let Zoe know if you have any other problems with the guy. I'm sure she could do something what with the, what with being an RA. I will. I can't escape this feeling of unease from this conversation. Though even if he isn't saying it, I'm sure Quinn wants me to switch the topic. So how are the lime noodles? Oh my god, so good! Really? Yeah, I didn't think they'd taste as good as, as they did. I'm definitely getting more in the future. I'll get some for you too. Don't pretend like you don't want any. Admittedly, I have been a bit curious ever since he bought it. I mean, it surely can't be that good. Lime flavoring is very rarely done right. Maybe Quinn is really just trying to prank me right now. I guess I do a little bit. Aha, uh -huh, I knew you were a fellow noodle lover. Maybe we can all go out sometime and get some noodles. That sounds pretty nice. Oops, I gotta go, Mason. My roommate is giving me a look right now, so I should probably probably start shutting down over here. Oh, okay, good night, I guess. <sighs> oh god, of course that calls me the arm. Sweet dreams! That was a pretty abrupt ending to the conversation. I'm not sure how I feel about his, this roommate Quinn has. He sounds pretty abrasive. Maybe it's none of my business, though. In fact, I'm probably being concerned over nothing. Really, though, I should probably go to sleep as well. It'll be time to chat up the others later. I set my phone down and adjust myself into a more comfortable position. I let my eyes naturally fall. My eyelids begin feeling heavier, until eventually... Uh-oh. It seems you've become more aware of it now. I imagine it won't be long now. Hello? Mm -hmm. I'm very curious as to who or what Dante is. Oh god, why is my alarm going off? Right. I have a morning class today. Can I even call it that if the sun isn't up? Yesterday had been so mentally exhausting with a big revelation that was dropped on my lap. Looking at the messages on my phone, I know for a fact it wasn't a dream. Waking up this early every Wednesday is not going to be good for my mental health. I can actually hear my head pounding a bit. Hopefully this headache passes when I wake up more. I 
wonder if it's not too late to switch out of the class. I'm already up now, though, so I should at least go with this and go this one time. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm remembering about how pretty the art in this game is. The campus is eerily quiet right now, like a scene from a horror movie. It feels almost like I'm being watched, even though I know that's not the case. I keep turning my head, as if expecting to see one of those cultists from the club fair following me in a white van. However, all I spot are half-awake students trudging sluggishly to various buildings. It's nice to see that, that being up this early isn't, isn't just killing me. Walking up to the building where my class is being held, I'm stopped dead at the door, which is not opening. Am I at the wrong spot? I check my phone again to verify that my class is indeed in this building. This can't be right. It says my economics class is at 6 o'clock on Thursday. Did I really set my alarm for the wrong day? According to my schedule, I have an intro to astronomy class in four more hours. I feel the weight of regret and pain washing over me. So much sleep was lost. At what cost? Can I, what can I even do right now? The cafe won't open for a few more hours. I could head back to my room and try to get some more sleep, but I've already gotten up. It's not like that would be quality sleep. Black, let's walk around. Thinking about it, I don't think I've really explored the campus much outside the orientation. Sure, I've been to the library, but that's about it. I really don't know what else campus has to offer. I should at least try to familiarize myself with the area. I walked around for a while, reaffirming what I'd learned at orientation a few days ago. I made sure I could find the gym, although I had a bit of a difficult time figuring out which door was the, was the entrance. I also found the dining hall uh, the dining hall near the science building where my astronomy class would be held. Passing it passing by it was a strange experience. The scent wafting from the facility was not what I expected. I thought I'd smell warm breakfast foods, and instead the air was permeating the stench of seafood and some sort of fruit component. My curiosity was somewhat piqued, but I really wasn't hungry yet. Something about the fishy banana smell wasn't really helping either. I ended up settling on the grass near the club fair. The tables were all set up again, and the recruiters were passionately preaching to passers-by. I wonder how they can get up early in the morning, put all this together, and still have the energy to try and get others to join them. I feel like I'm running on fumes even now. Hey, it's called coffee. The sky looks so blue today. The sun feels warm beating down on me like this. It won't be long before nice days like today are replaced with colder ones like yesterday. I feel like I could just drift away like this. But all my cares go. It's no wonder I have a headache. I have too much going on. Psychics, school, romance, and money. It'd be so easy if I just didn't have to think about it. I guess the whole thing can't be that crazy. Although, if psychics are real, what else is real? Aliens? Space is pretty big, and there are plenty of theories about ancient civilizations being influenced by otherworldly influences. Ghosts? Speaking to the dead is supposedly a thing psychics can do, right? The grass here feels nice. Hey! This voice sounds familiar. I'm probably mistaken, though. I'm sure whoever it is isn't really talking to me. Do you really think the grass is the best place to be taking a nap? Hm. Aiden! I open my eyes to the sight of Aiden standing over me. He looks extra radiant this morning. Oh, that might just be the sun shining behind him. Ugh! He has a calming smile on his face, but his eyes flash with something else concern, or perhaps disapproval. Maybe if I had it, maybe if I had his empathic abilities, I'd have, have a better idea of what he's thinking while he looks down on me. Oh, it's a pretty comfortable place to sleep if you ask me. Sure, I suppose if you're fine with dirtying your clothes and smelling like something off the ground. What are you doing here anyway? I'm the student government president. I make it a point to appear at the fair at least once a day. Right, that makes sense. I guess I just didn't think you'd get here this early. What do you mean, early? Setup started an hour ago. Besides, there are only so many hours in the day. I have to be here in the initial hours if I intend to make my other appointments. Do you ever find time for yourself? Certainly, I might make it a point to find an hour for leisurely reading every evening. What about all the time you spend with Zoe and the others? I don't necessarily consider that time for myself. It's true that on occasion I do find their distraction enjoyable, however, I am in attendance mostly as a favor to Zoe. Didn't Jude say that part of, that, of those meetings was to help you all cope with everything? Well, I cannot speak for everyone, I find that my methods of dealing are more than adequate. 
I am familiar with my limits, and I am in no way allowing myself to be hindered by my unique disposition. So between school and club meetings, you only have an hour to do what you want? That wouldn't be totally accurate. You make it sound as if I'm a slave to my obligations. I mean, I am definitely thinking that, and I don't know how we can live like that. You know I can feel your doubt, right? It's fine if you don't understand. Very few people ever do. I chose my obligations, and at any point I could choose to drop them. But I don't because they are a means to an end that I desire. I guess, but don't you worry you're missing out on life? You never know what the future might hold. Well, I guess Quinn might, actually, but life has very few guarantees. I don't think I'd want to give up, give up any more time than I could to spend living my life to the fullest. What do you mean, more time? Aiden! Do you mind coming and taking a look at this? A slender peacock interrupts the wolf's sentence. The bird waves Aiden over, carrying what looks to be a large paper banner. Whatever Aiden was about to ask was going to have to wait. Duty calls. Sorry, I have to go take care of this. We'll have to continue this another time. Aiden looks me over once more, as if thinking about what I just said before moving away to help the bird. Hey, the bird is the word. As I watch him slowly disappear into the gradually increasing crowd, as crowd as more people pull onto the main campus. I can't say I particularly envy him. By choice or not, I don't think I could do what he does. I consider laying back down on the inviting grass, but it's probably a better idea to go back to my room and keep my phone charged. As I got to my door, I found my eyes drawn towards an unfamiliar face exiting the room next to mine. Dan! Oh hey, you must be my neighbor. Huh? Oh no, sorry, I was just paying him a visit. I can see that the large hyena is slightly sweating. I guess he and his friend must have done some sort of morning workout. Oh yeah, they certainly did. He certainly fits the jock type. Name's Dan, though. You look kind of familiar. Uh, sorry, I didn't catch your name. Mason, and I was thinking the same thing. Do we have a class together? That's, wh that's what it was. I think I saw you in Calc. Anyway, it was nice meeting you, Mason, but I gotta go hit the showers. I really hope Dan becomes, like, bigger part of the story. I want to know more about him. He's, he's cool. He's interesting. I watch Dan as he walks away. He seems quite worn out by whatever he was doing. Yeah, it's because he was uh, going to town on someone. Some people take the whole workout thing seriously, I guess. I don't think I could start my work at my morning... <laughs> I don't think I could start my mornings that way. Mason, really? Come on now. You can't be this thick-headed. Come on. Back in my room, everything looks just as, just as I left it this morning. I really need to sit down and find time to really settle in and unpack what few belongings I have. My thoughts are cut short by the interjection of my phone. It looks like the others are all awake. Morning, you guys. Good morning, Zoe. Elliot, your cap's locked. Oops, sorry. Well, I'm sure you haven't forgotten, Zoe. I just felt it was pertinent to remind you of our class starting in a short while. Yes, Mom. Don't worry, I didn't forget. What class are you guys taking this morning? It's an intro to astronomy class. Wait, really? Me too. We know. Quinn told us we shared a class this semester. I deduced it was astronomy, as my other classes seemed inappropriate. I guess that makes sense. He's probably making a he's probably taking a ton of business and finance type classes. Still, it's a bit surprising that they knew I didn't that they knew and didn't tell me. I guess they didn't want to make me uncomfortable. Speaking of Quinn, I wonder where he is right now. <clears throat> Probably in class, though. I can't imagine that would keep him from texting. I haven't heard from him this morning. Might still be asleep. I sincerely hope not, but it seems likely. <clears throat> I'm cutting my throat. Sorry about that, guys. Chances are he stayed up late again on another one of his binges. What are you up to today, Jude? Visiting Mom. I'm not sure what it is, but there's something sweet about a guy in his mid-20s still finding time for his mom. I haven't even been able to get a hold of mine, but I know I'd see her if I could. Aw, tell her I said hi. Okay. I'm gonna put my phone away. Morning Rush is going to start coming in. Good luck, Elliot. I'm sure it'll be a good day thanks to you, Mason. Blah. I guess we'll see you in a class, Mason. Definitely. 
Moving over to my bed, I plug my phone into the charge for a few minutes before I head back out to class. I'm a bit curious if Quinn is actually still asleep, but I don't even know which room he is, which room is his, so it's not like I can check up on him. I wonder what kind of premonition told him we were all sharing a class. Did they only sign up for the class because Quinn told them that they had done so in the future? I might be jumping to conclusions, but even so, that would be a bit concerning if they relied on Quinn to make major decisions like that. I'm probably reading too much into this, though. It feels like my brain is going to turn it is going to turn inside out, and the more I try to understand half of their social dynamics when factoring in psychic abilities, at least I can think about the idea of it all without having some sort of meltdown. I can't imagine how freaked out they must have been yesterday when I just stormed off into the bathroom. That definitely wasn't my best moment. I don't think I've ever felt that overwhelmed before. Well, that's not true. I freaked out pretty badly when I woke up after the accident. It feels like every time I find myself in a new setting, I find myself shocked by some huge shift in my life. Maybe I'm just bad at adapting to new information. I remember it took me longer than it should have to even comprehend that my parents had gotten divorced after my accident. Speaking of, my dad still hasn't texted me either. I guess I should assume I'm on my own when it comes to money. Whatever, I'll just think about what to do after the class. And maybe Zoe or Aiden have some ideas of what I can do. Getting to my classroom proved to be easier than I expected. Maybe it was because I'd gotten lost so many times that I'd just gotten used to running behind. Finding the science building while exploring the campus this morning definitely made it a lot easier to find. Walking in, I can see Zoe and Aiden sitting in the front row. I'm not exactly the type to do that, so I moved to grab a seat in the back. Mason, what are you doing, silly? We've got a seat open up here. Well, that's just perfect. Be right there. How exactly does this whole psychic radar of hers work anyway? Do I just walk into a room and she knows exactly where I am? Probably. I wonder how far away I need to be for her to no longer be able to sense me. I was wondering when you'd show up. The class is going to be starting soon. Doubtful. This professor has a reputation for being late. I suspect we have several minutes, several minutes yet before we begin the lecture. It's good to see you made it, Mason. I was worried you might have dozed off on a mound of dirt somewhere. What? Aiden, that's so rude! It's fine, Zoe. He's just joking about something earlier. You had to be there. You guys have an inside joke? No way you can't do this to me! Tell me what happened. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm a couple minutes late. Small paper jam with the printers. This is Intro to Astronomy. You may call me Mr. Branson. The instructor drops a stack of papers in front of Aiden and motions for him to take one and pass it on. Moving around the room is your copy of the syllabus, as well as instructions for the class project. Class project? Yes, class project. Please save your questions until the end. We've got a lot to get through. Zoe grumbles as she sits back in her seat. We all then resign ourselves to another orientation. Most of what Mr. Branson says is standard for a course introduction. And another series of guidelines that sound similar to every instructor's expectations for their class. Looking over, I can see Zoe has begun doodling stars in, over her syllabus while Aiden is taking notes in the small black notebook. Oh, one more yawn for good measure. Okay. Now, the projects I'd mentioned. You will all be writing a research paper on a constellation of your choosing. You'll be expected to provide both scientific and cultural background. The rubric is on the back of your syllabuses. Syllabuses. Syllabi? Anyway, are there any questions? Aiden doesn't even wait to be called on. He simply raises his hand and begins speaking. Are we meant to pick different constellations? What about group cooperation? Is there a curve we need to be aware of? The teacher looks astounded as Aiden continues to bombard him with questions. I understand wanting to be informed, but it's just the first day and the wolf is just relentlessly assaulting the instructor with inquiries. The rest of the class period is spent answering student questions and concerns. Well... That was... something. Definitely not a fan of having to put a whole research paper together on a constellation. But at least we all, we have all semester to get it done. I agree. I figure if I get one part done every week, it should be perfect at the end of the semester. I disagree. Zoe and I stopped moving and turned to Aiden. Rather than work on something all semester, why not simply dedicate our weekend to the assignment? We know all the requirements thanks to the provided rubric and my inquiries. There's no reason why we shouldn't get it done as soon as possible. Then it's no longer something we need to worry about. 
Aiden, I get what you're doing, I get what you're saying, but that seems a little excessive. It's not excessive, it's practical. We'll only be receiving more assignments as the semester progresses. It's better not to t it's better to take care of important ones like this as soon as possible. Back me up here, Mason. Aiden's being a bit much, isn't he? Yeah, I'm going with Zoe on this one. I mean, I'm not against being punctual, but I don't know if we should really be rushing to get done either. We've got time. I don't see why we should why we wouldn't use it. Exactly. We don't need to be in a rush. Besides, we both know regardless of what I say, you're going to finish your assignment this weekend anyway. All right, guys, that is a good place to uh, pause it. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell until the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!